Welcome back to the Wargaming Table here on the Sit Rep Podcast, your source for military historical wargaming. I'm your humble host, Ariskany Jim, here to chuck some dice in another 15mm Smackdown. As part of our ongoing 30th anniversary review of Desert Storm and the Gulf War of 1991, we're taking a look at the Battle of Kuwait International Airport. Fought on the last day of the war, units of 1st and 2nd Marine Divisions, ably supported by U.S. Army comrades of Tiger Brigade 2nd U.S. Armored, took this vital objective from a force comprised of remnants of over 10 Iraqi divisions. The system we're using is Battle Group, originally by Iron Fist Publishing, modified of course to accommodate 1991 weapons and equipment. This is a great World War II system, surprisingly easy to accommodate to this much more recent conflict. In past episodes, we review why we chose this route for our Gulf War games, and how we brought Battle Group, at least in an informal, experimental basis, into the 1990s. So let's take a look at the table here and review some of the forces that we'll see in today's game. First up we have our tried and tested US Marine M60A1 main battle tanks, complete with ERA reactive armor panels we'll need to defeat Iraqi RPGs and anti-tank guided weapons. Next up we have an LAV 120mm mortar carrier, an infantry 120mm mortar and a little command team there. And lots of LAVs. Marines love their LAVs. We've got some LAV-25s, the standard ones. We have an ITV, improved tow vehicle. Uh, Of course, we have to have an AH-1W Super Cobra attack helicopter gunship. And lots of Marine rifles. Now, Battle Group does have rules for if you take an army of a certain size, there has to be so much infantry in the force. So we wanted to make sure that, you know, even though we're playing in a different era, obviously, we wanted to make sure that these armies are, in fact, battle group legal as far as, you know, the required amount of infantry. I've got three complete uh, squads here, 13 men apiece. Marines do organize in larger squads uh, than most other services do. Um, with each a squad leader, so three fire teams of four plus a squad leader and a platoon command element. Oh, speaking of infantry, we're also looking at a uh, anti-tank team over here, armed with a combination of AT-4s, Dragons, and uh, law rockets. Of course, we have to have uh, some bad guys on our table, so we have plenty of Iraqis. We've got a full platoon over here on their right wing of infantry, a platoon of T-55s, a Shilka uh, self-propelled anti-aircraft artillery system. Uh, we saw some BTRs there a second ago. Here we're looking at AT-3 Sagar anti-tank missiles. These are Type 59-2s. Uh, these are Chinese knockoffs of the T-55, upgraded, uh, believe it or not. Our old friend, uh, the RPG uh, squad, which you know, we'll be happy to see again. Okay, here's our Iraqi command team. Notice I have some additional figures in here. I'm trying to increase the Iraqi command team's ability to absorb casualties, to make them a little bit hardier, so they don't get knocked out so quickly this time. We're also looking at more T-55s and more Iraqi infantry over here on the Iraqi left wing. So yeah, it's quite a force. Uh, this is going to be the last big 15mm game that we do for Gulf War. So I kind of wanted to go out with a bang. I pretty much crammed just about everything I have on the table here um, for my 1991 Gulf War forces. I think I'm missing some Humvees. But other than that, this is pretty much everything uh, here for our, you know, our big finale for our 15mm Desert Storm War games. Here are the battle rating limits for both sides. This is going to be a bigger battle. We want it to go a little bit longer. So both sides can take a little bit more of a beating before they reach their battle rating limit and break. Okay, the Marines are on the attack, so they'll be going first. We roll their orders. That's 3d6 for a company size game, plus 5 is the number of officers in their force for a total of 18 orders this turn. So I'm going to use my first activation here to move this first fire team up to the corner of this building. Um, I make sure that I'm within 5 inches. Infantry movement in Battle Group is usually 5. You can move 10 if you take a double maneuver order, but I want to just move 1 because I want him to do something once he gets there. Now I'll move the rest of the fire team in just a second, but now that I know where the lead guy is, I just want to show you what he's up to. Alright, so he's looking out across the runway there um, of Kuwait International Airport. And you see where he's got line of sight on some Iraqi infantry by their shipping containers. Those are RPG gunners and some Iraqi armor, those Type 59 Mark IIs hiding back there. Alright, so, first thing I'm going to do is I'm calling in some artillery. 
So, moving up some additional Marine infantry, I'm going to uh, now I'm going to try to formally spot these targets that I hope to call in some artillery on. I have to actually observe that infantry and that armor. So first I'll try to uh, make the observation check on that infantry, assuming I can get it in the box. Okay, I made it, barely. That's exactly the role I needed. It's easier to spot a tank, so okay, I made that one a little bit more easily. Good deal. Alright, it's time to call in some artillery. Alright, so one of the things you're able to do on Battle Group is, rather than buying artillery directly into your list, you can buy priority. And that's more or less how important your mission is to, uh, to the higher headquarters. You have to make a priority check. The higher the priority, the easier the check, the more points it is. Then you have to make a communications test. Now, fortunately, I've built into my list over here uh, a small communications team that allows me to re-roll a certain number of times. Basically, it makes this easier for me to get headquarters on the phone uh, to call in a good artillery mission. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my priority check. Okay, headquarters is paying attention. Now I'm going to try to get them on the phone. I need a three up. I made that one as well. Okay, so the first thing I have to do, unfortunately, is every time I use Marine Artillery here in the airport, I do have to draw a battle rating counter. Because it's collateral damage, I'm firing high explosive into an airport. My commanders and the Kuwaiti government are not going to be too pleased. So this artillery mission is going to cost me three battle rating points against my limit of 20. Um, okay, we're off and running. Here comes the good news. So I have two 155mm guns in my mission. The first gun is going to fire a, uh, a double fire mission, high explosive against those RPG guys. The other guy is calling in copperheads. These are anti-tank guided weapons that can be fired from artillery against a laser designated target. Alright, so first I'm going to fire my HE mission. Um, you'll notice over there on my card I have an adjusted uh, artillery accuracy table. That's not the one from actual battle group. So a 3 indicates that it's off by 1d6 inches. Make that 4 inches at 9 o'clock from its initial uh, aiming point. Again, that's not the actual table from battle group. My uh, table is much more accurate. I'm firing GPS guided artillery here. Alright, so I said 4 inches measured from 9 o'clock. Alright, so that dice was my aiming point and that little explosion marker is where my shell actually landed. Next, I'm calling in my copperhead. That's a guided weapon that hits on 2d6, uh, a 5 up on 2d6. Helps if I get it in the box. Okay, 8, that's a hit. Awesome. So the armor piercing value on my copperhead anti-tank guided weapon is going to be a 12. Um, it gets applied against the tank's armor, which has been heavily upgraded, you'll notice, from previous episodes. Uh, those tanks were going down too fast, so I upgraded all the armor. Nevertheless, it's a copperhead against the roof armor, the most vulnerable part of the tank. So basically, as long as I don't roll snake eyes, yeah, he's toast. Um, so, yeah, no big surprise there. We're going to go ahead and knock out that tank, put a little smoke counter on there. Boom, nice knowing you, buddy. Um, bad news for the Iraqis is that they now have to draw a battle rating counter. And, oh, they got a 1. All right, cool. So, uh, they kind of got away with that one. Nevertheless, minus one tank. Can't complain about that. Now let's see what the high explosive shells did when they landed in that parking lot next to those RPG gunners. Okay, so looking down here at my card. Alright, I have a seven dice at two plus uh, for 155mm howitzer. You'll notice that's not the seven three plus. My artillery in 1991 is deadlier than World War II artillery. I'm firing DP ICM, dual purpose improved convention munitions. Basically, it's a cluster bomb. So, yeah, nasty stuff. So, out of, out of two plus, uh, out of seven dice, pretty much they all hit except one. However, here's one thing that we've been forgetting to do in our previous battle group games. I've been totally forgetting about infantry cover saves. So, sorry about that, guys, but we're going to fix that here. Now, out of all these guys, um, you'll notice that where they are in relation to where the artillery landed, they don't really have any cover. Even in the open, though, you get a six plus. Uh, so one guy, he heard the shell coming in, he flattened himself out just in time, um, so he didn't get taken out by the bomblets released by that uh, dual-purpose improved convention munition shell. Nevertheless, there's only one guy left in the unit, so the last man standing rule is going to uh, take effect. We're going to go ahead and draw a battle rating counter for an eliminated unit. Looks like the Iraqis are three more points down. Alright, time for the Marines to move out with some of their tanks. Unfortunately, this big building is in the way. So, as you can see here, I've got a bit of a convoluted movement path here. 
Um, we're gonna take the top speed order. That basically means you move twice and don't fire at all. Obviously, I have no target, so I'm not gonna shoot. So I'm just trying to get my tanks a little bit more into action here. Um, actually, that last link can't quite get there. He's still kind of stuck in that berm there. So there you go. He kind of crashes through the brush. Awesome. Next in is my Cobra, because I have to cause as many Iraqi casualties as fast as humanly possible. There are a lot of Iraqis on this table here, guys. However, there is an SA-7 SAM on the table, surface-to-air missile. He's positioned behind that building here, so I have to fly in just right so that that, uh, that SA-7 never gets a clear shot at me. However, there is a Shilka on the table, uh, a self-propelled anti-aircraft artillery, and he will get a shot on me. So, ugh. Okay, here we go. The Shilka needs a 4-up to hit me. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, awesome. Okay, he missed. Cool. That means that my Cobra now is free and clear. He's going to get a double fire order. Ah, uh, it's time to get serious, guys. I'm not playing around here. I'm firing Hellfires right off the bat. Now, these are my only Hellfires. After this, I'm out of Hellfires. But uh, now's the time. All right, so I'm going to fire one Hellfire at each target. I need a 2-plus to hit. AFVs in the open. Oh, it doesn't get much closer than that, folks. I needed twos, and I got two twos. So, yep. Now, that's an armor penetration value of 16 against an E. Technically, um, they can survive if they roll a 3 on 2d6, but I'm not even going to waste the time. Um, yeah, these two T-55s are smoked, and uh, that is the end of that. Cool. So, that's going to be two more um, counters for the Iraqis. Looks like they got two fours. Okay, now... Now... We're getting somewhere. Cool. Infantry, small arms, up! Okay, so I took a uh, move and fire order with those two marine fire teams. I moved them into that building, up onto that roof, with five inches of movement. They're now going to open fire on those Iraqi infantry coming at them from across the runway there. So the first fire team is going to try to observe. I need a four up. And he failed! Private power, what are you trying to do to my beloved corps? That's okay, there's another fire team. He'll take a shot. He makes it with a four. Good deal. So, now I'm going to assemble my fire pool. This is a lot of dice. Again, I'm firing all automatic weapons and an M249 saw. That spits out a lot of ammunition. Still, I only get uh, four hits there, it looks like, so that's not so good. Now let's check for cover saves. If we draw a line of sight between the firing unit and the target unit, you see there's no real intervening cover there. So, um, those Iraqis, again, you always get at least a six uh, for cover saves. Um, so here we go. Now, I do admit, guys, I do roll too many dice here in the camera, so I do apologize for that. Um, I should only be rolling four dice. Nevertheless, I didn't get any sixes, so no saves. All four Iraqis in that fire team are taken out. That is going to precipitate another battle rating counter draw for the Iraqi player, and that comes up as a three. So there are three more points down. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move two marine fire teams out of this back courtyard here, into the building, up on the roof, see if I can spot some targets for my onboard mortars. So first I'm going to try to spot those RPG gunners back there behind that container, and maybe the AT-3 uh, anti-tank gu uh, guided weapon operators that I know are hiding behind that bush line. So first let me uh, see what I can get here on the line of sight. All right, so clearly this first team can see that RPG gunner back there by that red container. First, I'm going to try to observe him, and I do make the observation check with a six, and I also knock down my fence. All right, so I've got him spotted now, so I can go ahead and designate an aiming point. Designating an aiming point with my U.S. Marine Corps dice, awesome. Now, it's any point that you can see, so I'm actually going to aim a little bit behind the guy in the hopes of getting more of his buddies uh, with a good land on my mortar barrage. Okay, um, so the units I'm actually going to use to fire with here, I have an LAV carrying 120mm mortar, and an infantry, oops, sorry about the focus there, an infantry 120mm mortar right beside him. Alright, so I'm calling in a couple missions here, let's see how accurate they are. Alright, unfortunately they're both going to be off by 1d6 inches, those indicated by those threes there. Now let's see how far away they are. Again, 1d6 per mission. Uh, one is off by 3 inches, one is off by 5 inches. I really should be rolling these one at a time. Uh, the 3 o'clock miss is going to miss uh, by 3 inches to 12 o'clock. And the one that missed by 5... Okay, let me go ahead and put that up. So straight north, 3 inches, there we go. And now for that 5, that one's going to be off by 9 inches... I'm sorry, to, to 9 o'clock. Sorry about that. Alright, so, let's see, 5 inches to 9 o'clock, that lane's right off there. Also, that, that RPG gunner in front of the, uh, 
the shipping container shouldn't be there. He's already been removed, or he should be removed, because of the last man standing order already. So that's why I don't apply any fire on him. Um, he's, he's, he's a ghost. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say he's a ghost. Alright, but in all seriousness. Alright, so I got uh, a six dice mission that is going to land. Uh, they kill on a four plus. So I'm going to go ahead and roll six dice here. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good roll there. Alright, sweet. Five hits out of six dice. Can't complain about that. Uh, the other fire mission comes in, uh, inflicts three more damage. So it's going to be eight total hits. Now, those Iraqis that are tucked down there between that building and those containers, they do have some pretty good cover. So they're going to get a four up for cover. Uh, my fence keeps falling over. So they make four saves. Again, the cover saves were a uh, whole part of the rules I was missing in previous games. Um, however, with four hits, in other words, four failed cover saves, that's going to be four um, knockdown Iraqis that will be an Iraqi... Uh, I should say that will be an Iraqi um, RPG squad knocked out. That means another counter draw. Go ahead and pull it. And it looks like four more points down against the Iraqi battle rating limit. Oh boy. Alrighty. Now, this other team is going to try and spot those Saggers. He gets one spot check because he did have to move to get here. I need a four up to spot the Saggers. Okay, I don't get it. So there's no fire mission coming in after them. No joy on that one. So we finished up the marine turn here. Uh, not really much is going on. You guys have seen all the highlights. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Moved up some marine uh, fire teams, took some shots, didn't amount to very much. Made some more observation checks that didn't amount to very much. I did move up my LAV platoon, especially my ITV, improved tow vehicle. You see there with the uh, tow launching boom that comes off the top of the hull. He's deployed in a defensive posture, just in case those T-55s back there decide to get cute. Same with my uh, Marine anti-tank infantry here, again with a mixture of Dragons, AT-4s, and Laws. Yeah, there is another uh, T-55 platoon back there. But all in all, not a bad first turn uh, for the Marine player here today. At the end of the Marine turn, no matter what, they have to draw a battle rating. This is to, uh, I can reflect that time crunch that they're under. It looks like I got a 4, man. Alright, so my commanding general is impatient. He wonders why I don't own this whole airport already. So it looks like the Marines are already about one-third of the way to their battle rating limit. And it looks like the Iraqis are, well, actually a little bit over one-third. So this one's going to get rough, guys, and get rough quick. Over to the Iraqis. So let's go ahead and walk through all their actions and uh, see how things work out for them. Alright, so the first thing I did was I moved forward with my infantry teams out of that side courtyard as far as I could across the runway. The idea is to hopefully screen those tanks that are also advancing from the Marine anti-tank infantry over there on the wing. So there's going to be a bit of a smackdown over there on that Marine flank. I'll tell you what, that T-55 is making damn sure to stay out of line of sight of that um, LAV tow vehicle. That's for damn sure. Alrighty, I also have over here by my command team my sniper has moved forward to a firing position, as has my SA-7 Grail man pads. He's going to try and put a surface-to-air missile into my Cobra. My last RPG guy that survived those mortar barrages, he's going to try and put an RPG flank shot into that lead LAV. Those two Type 59 Mark IIs are going to try and put some shells, again, into that lead LAV. Alrighty, what else we got? Oh boy, over here things get really thick. Alright, so that last T-55 is pushed forward through that traffic jam. He's going to try and put a 100mm HE shell into that uh, Marine building across the runway there. He's got lots of BTR support, lots of heavy machine guns. That Shilka has also moved up. Now, he's not firing now. He fires during reaction phase. But, or he takes reaction fire. But he's in position now to take a shot on that Cobra during the Cobra's next turn. Pushed forward with a lot more uh, Iraqi infantry over there on the extreme um, Iraqi right flank there. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of gunfire heading across the runway at those Marines in that stone building. Now, they are in hard cover, and uh, they all had to move. All those Iraqis had to move up and get spotting checks. So, you never know. They might actually survive. I have three Sagger teams back here behind this bush line, which I'm knocking over with my pen. Um, however, I think I screwed up. I think I moved forward too much with that tank. I think I blocked their line of sight. So, yeah, oops on that one. What can I say? So let's see how all that Iraqi fire worked out. The first Iraqi fire team tried to observe those Marines that were there. With a two, they failed. However, this fire team did manage to observe them. 
put some fire down there, did some pretty good damage, scored four casualties, took out the fire team, and did unfortunately um, precipitate a, uh, a counter draw for the Marines. So, not good news there. His BTR failed with an observe with a two. This tank over here, thank God, failed with a one. That was that was a lucky break. This guy could not observe with a two. That BTR, however, did observe with a four. He fired his, uh, his two machine guns, inflicted two marine casualties after cover saves. So I knocked two marines out of that fire team. Um, that pins down the fire team, but thankfully does not precipitate a counter draw. This tank over here, this Type 59, failed to observe with a 1, so could not actually fire a shell at the um, at the LAB. This guy, however, could observe with a 4. He shot, but believe it or not, that 5 is a miss. So at this range, he needs a 4 up, becomes a 5 up because the LAV moved this turn, becomes a 6 up because he moved this turn, and he does not have a stabilized gun. So he needed a 6 up, got a 5, missed. This last RPG guy had a 6, he rolled a five, he scored a hit, and yeah, that's it for that LAV. So that's, we'll figure that out in just a second. All right, uh, over here, okay, the SA-7 anti-aircraft missile needs a nine up on 2D6 to try and uh, knock down my Cobra over here. Fortunately, roll an eight, just barely missed. So again, lucky break on that one. My sniper, uh, moved into firing position, and the, he, he took a shot at a particular target, and I'll explain why. He tried to take a long-range sniper shot and knock down one more Marine out of that fire team. That would trigger the last man standing rule, which would kill that fire team, which would trigger another uh, another counter draw. However, with a two, he missed. So, good deal. So now for that blown up LAV, um, I gotta draw a battle rating counter here. So, again, my rating is, t my limit is 20, so I'm not looking forward to this. What did I get? And, oh, you know it! Beyond the Call of Duty! Let me see your war break! Ah! So, Beyond the Call of Duty means that one of your units gets a free out-of-phase turn. I'm going to spend it on my Cobra because, hell yeah. I've already fired my Hellfires, so I'm going to go ahead and cook off my Hydra 70 rocket pods. Double fire order, I've got to do it, man. I've got to do something about the, the Marine left wing. So 6 times 2 is 12, I need a 4+. plus. So looks like I get 8 hits. Again, I'm firing both of my 6 dice attacks at once. I'm pretty much burning everything I have right now. So it looks like I got 8 hits, that means the uh, Rekis are going to get 8 saves. They are in the open, so their saves are tough, they're going to be 6 pluses. Uh, but they still get uh, 8 tries, and again, um, each uh, success they get means one less guy destroyed. Uh, but they don't get any saves. All right, so it's going to be eight figures right off the table. I'm just going to go ahead and take that first squad. Old fire teams right off the table. Baboo! That's how we do it in the real man's Marine Corps, son. All right, I'm going to go ahead and draw a counter here. Except here's where my cameraman catches me in a mistake that was actually two units destroyed. I draw two counters, two fire teams. So, awesome. Thank you, Jim, uh, my cameraman, for that nice save there. Appreciate it. Okay, the end of the Iraqi turn means the Iraqi mass surrender phase. This is a scenario rule that I used in my 1991 Gulf War games to reflect, you know, what we see in the history. You know, mass Iraqi infantry surrenders to coalition units. So it's a very simple rule. At the end of the Iraqi turn, each Iraqi infantry unit only rolls a d6. If it rolls a 6, it surrenders and takes a double movement order towards the closest American unit. So one guy or one fire team there has surrendered. The next one is going to be this RPG guy that blew up my LAV. Watch him surrender now, now that he blew up my... Oh, he does! How dare you! Friggin' nerve of that guy. So, yeah, he blew up my LAV, he throws away his RPG, picks up a rifle, and now crosses the runway. It wasn't us, man, we didn't do it. We're riflemen, see? Alright, let's see if any of these Sagger guys uh, back here surrender. That would be nice. Okay, they didn't surrender. Well, of course. Um... Here are some more Iraqi units that have taken some pretty heavy losses. Let's see if any of these guys uh, surrender. So, again, one per fire team. Ooh, he surrenders. Sweet. Oh, another one. Man, okay, the Iraqis got, got pretty badly beat up here in the, uh, in the surrender phase. I guess that, uh, that Cobra scared them <laughs> when it fired off all those Hydra rockets. They don't know that that Hydra, or that that Cobra is now out of rockets and out of Hellfires. All he's got left is chain guns. 
But nevertheless, um, yeah, we've got some Iraqi uh, infantry moving across the runway with their hands raised in surrender. And that's going to be a significant help for Marine prospects, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so the Iraqis have lost four additional units in the mass surrender phase. Uh, that means four battle rating counters drawn. They're going to get lucky at least once, I know it. Um, but actually, no. No minefields, no uh, airstrikes, nothing crazy. Um, they did roll, uh, they did draw pretty low numbers, which is, you know, I guess a mixed blessing. Um, but it looks like their new total is going to be 30, uh, da -da -da, check my math here, um, 34. So 34 out of 50. The Iraqis are well over halfway uh, to their limit. Um, meanwhile, the Marines over here are exactly halfway. They should be more, but they got lucky with that beyond the Call of Duty draw. So, um, the Marines are actually doing okay so far, um, but they're just getting lucky with the uh, counter draws. Okay, so both sides have now taken their turn two. We're going to go through what happened here pretty quickly. So there was a Marine fire team here. He knocked down three Iraqis over there. All right. Meanwhile, my Cobra, out of missiles, out of uh, rockets, desperately tried to uh, do what he could against that T-55. I did manage to pin him down, which is good, because if he puts a 100mm HE shell into that building, it's game over. At the same time, all those BTRs, all those heavy machine guns, that's a lot of lead flying around knocks down that marine uh, fire team, that's a battle rating counter. Unpinning that damaged fire team, that cost me another battle rating counter. Alright, so moving over to this fire team, they're going to go ahead and they try to call in a 120mm mortar mission on the Iraqi uh, command team. That was my aiming point, I actually ended up behind the building, pinned down the command team. Another mortar mission, I ended there on the uh, runway, so we got an Iraqi fire team there, so that was good. All right, this fire team tried to spot the saggers behind that brush. Failed. Private Powell, what are you trying to do to my beloved corps? These two M60s moved up, tried to observe and engage those Type 59s. Both observed, both hit, both grew up. Awesome. Ah! All right, now, my ITV, LAVs, and that tank, also these two LAVs, and also my uh, Marine anti-tank infantry, they are all in reaction fire. So they're, they're not firing, and they're waiting for the Iraqi turn to fire. Which is good, because when the Iraqis came around the wing here, I engaged some of the riflemen with some of my squad, and then my two Dragon Gunners put two missiles into that T-55 and knocked them out. So that was good. Now, over here to the Iraqi turn, we had three Sagger teams rolled up here. That guy could not spot. That second team could spot. He fired. He missed. The third team spotted, fired, and hit my lead Marine M60A1. He scored exactly a 7, which was the number he needed to actually score a penetration. Remember, if you tie the penetration number, the vehicle is immobilized. So with my Marine Corps dice there, I rolled uh, morale, the, mar the Marines are not pinned down. Then the Sagger team surrenders. Just like those RPG guys over there, they blew up my LAV and then they surrendered. Those Saggers uh, pinged my uh, Marine tank and then they gave up. Bastards. Why oh, you little maggot? You make me want to vomit! Okay, so this is the Marine score now. As you can see, it's getting pretty ugly. I'm down to just two points left before I break. And then the Iraqis, good God, look at this, dude. They are down to 49 out of 50. That's how close it came. This game is basically almost over already. So here we are at the end of turn two. All the cards off the table, all the unnecessary dice off the table. Yeah, this one's still way too close to call, guys. Uh, we've got a Marine tank that's going to be clogging up the road there. Fortunately, his buddies can plow through that chain link fence without too much worries. Um, yeah, I mean, we just went through all the dispositions here. Uh, suffice it to say, guys, um, this one's still way too close to call. Please uh, be sure to come back and stay tuned for part two, where we're going to finish up uh, and see how this game finally turns out. In the meantime, this is a risk any gym. Uh, for the Sitra podcast, thanks as always for all your support. We really do appreciate um, you know all the support you guys give us. Take care, and we'll be in touch very soon.